Where's the fuck? That's right here. Grab it. Grab its tail. Bro. Ah. Whew, I'm out of breath. I'm shaking. That was nuts. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. As the sun begins to set in West Africa, a familiar chorus breaks out. That chattering is fruit bats. These giant bats don't live in caves like you'd think, but up in trees. And as it starts to get dark, they start to communicate. The recent research shows most of the chatter is just them fighting and arguing. Here they're worshiped because the locals believe that the bats help their ancestors escape from slavery. Bats are absolutely incredible animals, and in a lot of places, they're actually having a lot of trouble, much like amphibians. They're another animal that are struggling in the current era of a human-transformed world, and they need our help. Wow, that is spectacular. These lowland forests are a mixed-use area with farms interspersed between rivers, creeks, and more farms in between natural forests. This combination of water, extra rodents from food crops, and habitat makes it a great place to find lots of snakes, especially the house snake. There are historically crocodiles here. So I imagine most of the crocodiles that inhabit this area of any size have been either turned into food for the meat or leather or sent off to the local voodoo market. And you have to kind of understand that these people have little kids here. This is actually where they bathe. The human animal conflict in really rural areas like this is a real thing. And you have to look at it from both sides. Hope somehow a solution can be found for both man and animal to share the same beautiful habitat. Dude, 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 dude. Snake, snake, snake. Uh, okay. Um. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so this guy is a Thrasops. Otherwise known as a black tree snake. They look a lot like Boomstong, and when you're dealing with them in a situation like this, it is a little dodgy because you know, if this was a boom song, it could very easily kill us. There's not the best medical care here, and even if there were, it could kill you. Thrasops are still rear fanged, and they do have a pretty nasty bite, uh, but they do have to chew more than the boom song. They are an arboreal colubrid. This one is uh, behaving better than I'm used to them behaving, probably because we just woke it up. What an amazing animal. He's checking out the camera. <laughs> Some people do work with these in the States, and I will once again caution, they are in the same subfamily as Thaltornis and Boomsong, so they're not a snake to handle lightly. You should treat these with caution. They're very nervous and they need a lot of room, so make sure to give them space. And they need to eat more frequently than a lot of snakes we're used to. If you feed them weekly, I have found they don't retain weight. And I mean, this is a wild snake though, skinny. They kind of always look on the verge of skinny because they're hypermetabolic. Certainly not for everyone, but for those who want a challenging and impressive and seemingly intelligent colubrid, I mean, Thrasops are it. They really are. I'd, I'd say uh, Thrasops and Boyga, probably my top two colubrid genus right there. And uh, this is a treat. Alrighty. Put you back in your tree, and you can go back to sleep. Thrasops, the western black tree snake. Really cool animal, but not the snake we came here to see. So it looks like a snake track. I think he's been getting a lot of rain, so it's not that old. So I'm gonna stick around these agricultural fields a little bit and keep poking around, because we're definitely on the right track. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a forest. Oh, yeah. It's a forest. 
Where the fuck? That's right here. Ah. Dude, it's right here. It's still there. There's the tail. He's in this bush pile. Right there, top, 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 right there, uh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whew, I'm out of breath, I'm shaking, that was nuts. So this is a forest cobra. We were not planning on <laughs> uh, chasing after a cobra in the dark with minimal lighting, uh, but you know, when you find an animal, you just go with it. There used to just be one species throughout Africa, but now there are several. So this makes it a lifer for me. I will say, forest cobras, are smart and they're feisty. They tail wrap your wrist, they give you a good huge chase, just an adrenaline filled snake to deal with. I'd put them up there with uh, kings, black mambras, taipans, it's some of the hardest snakes to deal with. They really are a challenge and uh, luckily I've got a good team with me so we're able to wrangle this guy into posing up for us. But what a beautiful, deadly, intelligent, freaky animal. I'm, I'm not even kidding, when you deal with these guys they'll often wrap the wrist that's holding them and that gives me advantage because now who's got who? Definitely not something for amateurs to mess with at all. It's always exciting when an animal gives you a chase and a challenge like forest cobras do and a lot of fun to share. But uh, certainly not our target, so we're gonna move on and let him on his way. These scattered agricultural fields, it's becoming more ag and less forest, but House snakes don't mind that, so we're just going to keep covering this area, avoiding crops carefully. Oh, there we go, there's the snake we're looking for. This is a house snake. House snakes have a huge appetite for rodents, and as such, that attracts them to human habitation. In fact, they're found around humans so often, that's how they got their name, the house snake. You always seem to find them in your house. House snakes are a lot of fun. They used to be coulibrids, but they've since been broken off into their own family, so they're former coulibrids. They are constrictors, just like the rat snakes, and they're truly non-venomous. They remind me a lot of the North American rat snakes or corn snakes. They're still active, they're not lethargic, but they're also not real nippy. And like rat snakes, they're super easy to keep. So this actually is a pretty good beginner snake. House snakes are captive bred a bit in the United States. They are great for rodent control in the fields, and as such, they're good little rodent eaters in captivity. I'm gonna take the measurements and let this guy on his way. Care for these guys is pretty straightforward. They're happy from the mid 70s all the way up into the 90s. Humidity, they have a pretty good range. You need some humidity, but not a ton. They'll be happy with that. They do need a shelter, but otherwise a very basic snake to keep. But the one note I will make is they will try to eat you out of house and home if you offer it. So don't overfeed your house snake. They'll eat it, but it's not good for them. House snakes are also really easy to breed. If you have a pair, you'll probably end up with more at some point. But remember, never feed snakes together because two snakes eating one mouse often ends up in one snake. And not a good situation. All right, a lot of times on this program we tell you this isn't a beginner snake, this isn't an intermediate snake, this isn't an advanced snake. And it's just because some animals aren't easy to keep if it's your first animal. But a house snake would be a good lead-in first animal, I think. As long as you don't overfeed them, make sure they have water and medium temperatures, they should do just fine because they adapt to almost anything. 